The National Igbo Council on Tuesday vowed to resist the influx of Almagiris into the southeast. They lamented the increasing relocation of the northern youths despite the interstate travel ban by the federal government. The highest Igbo social cultural organization, the Ohanese Igbo, the Igbo National Council, INC, and the Anambra State Association of Town Unions, ASATU, called for a halt to the influx. The Hanez Ndibu Youth and the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN, also kicked against the development. They accused security agencies of complicity in the free movement of the Amadjuris, which they said makes a mockery of the ban. Ohanese president in Anambra State, Demion Okeke Ugene, said the federal government has failed to effectively enforce its order. He said it was left for the people to protect themselves. Joining us live, a social commentator, Chuka Ihono. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you. First off, do you agree there is an influx of imageries uh, to that area? Uh, uh, well, yeah, yes. I'm not going to um, refute what we've been uh, watching and seeing in the news. So there is. So what are the issues that need to be considered? Is it the move that they are taking now? Uh, by, that, what do, by that, what do you mean? Um, I mean, they are saying that they should take their personal security and go ahead, I mean, protect themselves. As again, do these amadjuries pose any threat? Because, I mean, there is freedom of movement. <laughs> Not at the moment. At the moment, there's no freedom of movement. We have um, a lockdown situation. And um, you see, the thing is, when because we have freedom of movement in this country and we all belong to one country, yes, it's a bit difficult to stop people from moving around. But what the Ohanese are doing, which is right, is that basically because we have a lockdown now, there should be no movement. And so this movement that's going on is illegal and it must be aided by by agents of the state, basically, because it's agents of the state that look after the borders. So um, this is like playing for time, really, where in the lockdown situation, you can block these people from moving around. And then I suppose in this lockdown situation, you begin to uh, strategize as to how you're going to deal with their movement whenever there begins to be, uh, you know, proper free movement. That's what are some of the major speak. fears that you think is uh, necessitating this statement by these various groups in this regard? Well, first of all, let's not forget that about, I think it must have been about two years ago, or one and a half years ago, a traditional ruler in Delta State in Ubuluku, uh, which is next door to my hometown, Ogwashuku, uh, was killed. And, um, uh, and, and it's by, the, you know, this whole herdsmen, uh, you know, uh, migrants, really, let's just call it migrant, you know, these northern migrants. And um, uh, that was quite that time, some time ago. As I speak now, even in my hometown, which is in Delta, which is not geographically, uh, politically in the southeast, but maybe it is uh, in terms of, um, how do you call it, in terms of language and everything, you can say it's part of uh, the land. Um, my hometown has two towns next to it, Ibuzo and uh, Isela Zagba. And both places have been, uh, now have these people around. And in Isela Zagba, they've been causing fights and uh, killings for the past few months. So even before the COVID lockdown. So, um, we, you know, people are not fearing for nothing. There are real things happening. And um, uh, with the government we have today, um, it looks like um, they're not, they're turning a blind eye to this matter. Why do you think this is so? Because if, if it poses a security threat and they, they kill people like you um, are alleging, why is it that the government, whose responsibility is to protect lives and property, doesn't seem to be doing a lot? Um, I think it's um, a signature move of this present government. This present government has... You know, it has sort of failed Nigeria and Nigerians um, in, in many respects, in, 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 in maintaining the rule of law, in the economy. It, it, it seems to be a government that um, has the wrong things uh, as its um, priorities. 
And um, there I say, actually, there seems to be some bias towards um, uh, allowing things for the northern part of the country uh, to, to try to prosper, but in a negative way. In other words, uh, not necessarily whether the prosperity might not be negative, but the method to which it is being used to get the prosperity is negative. Uh, the, so, the Ibo National Council said something. They described the relocation to the south is as an assault um, on the <laughs> Indi Ibo. Um, how do you interpret this? Is it an assault really on Indi Ibo? Um, at the moment, it looks like it. Um, it looks like, you know, right now it's geared to one particular part of the country. Um, so that's why they would say it's an assault. And um, you, you, you know that the history of Nigeria and going back to before the war, the civil war and all that, you know that uh, the northern eastern tension um, is not something, it's not something that's new. You know, and I notice I call it Eastern because the whole Southeast uh, political um, uh, appendage is a more recent way to call what we used to call the Eastern part of Nigeria. So it's not a new thing. And so it stirs up um, memories of what happened in 1966 and before that. And um, yeah, that's why they consider it to be an assault, like a return battle. Um, in 30 seconds, could you tell us some of the uh, possible resolution to this matter? It is uh, basically, it is that the northern part of this country must be um, uh, uh, developed further. Western education is a must now for them, what we call Western education. I call it global education. They really do need to get things going in that manner. The north is too far behind. That's All what right. it is. Juka, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you.